All right, let's get set for the first conversation, which I said has to do if you've got an irregular income. You could have a fledgling business that you're starting up, and so you're not putting too much money into your own pockets. You're feeding it into your business, or in fact, you could be a professional who is not earning a salary. What are the various things that you need to bear in mind? How do you plan for your retirement? These are important aspects to consider. And to speak about all of these things, I have with me Mr. P. V. Subramaniam, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Subramani.com. Thank you so much, P. V. for taking the time. Pleasure speaking with you as always. I'll start with the most basic question. What's the first thing that somebody who earns an irregular income has to bear in mind? What are the check boxes that they need to tick? See, first of all, unlike a salaried person, his whole life itself is like equity, right? There is uncertainty. If one month he may earn one lakh, next month he may earn seventy thousand, then he may earn fifty thousand. There is nothing big. So his life is like equity. A lot of his investment should be like that. You know, I keep giving this example. If a person is a uh, salaried earner, in uh, say he's a professor in IIT. There's a chance that he will never lose his job. So he takes up a job at the age of 25. He will retire from there at the age of 68. <laughs> right? Till, till 68, professors have a job. So it is a guaranteed uh, income. Now, if he's a person who is an equity trader or a photographer or anything like that, then his income will fluctuate. So his life itself is like equity. So first of all, he has to realize that a lot of his money has to go into debt because that will be the solidity. Right, the, the the portfolio should be very very solid because his life is uh, his uh, main income is going to be very liquid. At least it will take ten years for him to establish himself. Well. Maybe even as a photographer, even fifteen years to establish well. So because of that uncertainty, the portfolio should reflect a lot of certainty. That is step one, and that can come from having a lot of money in debt instruments, which means he starts with a savings bank account, of course, and he also opens a ultra short bond fund or something like that and he keeps pushing all the extra money that he has into that account and from that account he could do an STP but step one obviously he should take adequate uh, term insurance he should take medical insurance he should explain to his family that there is uncertainty regarding his income and therefore <clears throat> his uh, vacations everything will depend on a lot of other things so he has to, having a liquid fund or an ultra short bond fund savings bank account anyway it will be there so that is, should be his first two priorities. Okay, so I get it. Okay, so in that sense, would you say that uh, somebody's contingency fund and this ultra short bond fund should be distinct then? Should you have a separate contingency fund? Uh, uh, TV, what they say for people with uh, a regular income, a salary, is that if, if you're if you're two people that are earning then you can keep up to six months this is a thumb rule that they say six months of right. uh, your expenses right. if you're a single right. earner they say you should keep more than that how should right. uh, someone with an irregular income manage somebody with an irregular income should have at least one year's expenses <clears throat> because uh, i mean if you're a photographer and then the covid happened for three months four months you may not get any job if you're a carpenter you may not have got any job so this covid has been a big teacher in saying okay three months expenses six months expenses is not enough you should have one year's expenses of course you can keep on saying you should have one year two years three years you can keep extending but remember that cost of keeping so much money in liquid fund means so much money is less deployed in equity or in even in the large uh, longer majority debt products so no he should not have more than one year's expenses in that and uh, when i say expenses expense should include all his uh, uh, i mean food and shelter and his term insurance medical insurance children's school fees whatever all those kind of expenses you know even if he wants a vacation that vacation emi everything should be available so what should he do he should keep all that money available in an ultra short bond fund Whenever he has money, he should not keep more than 50,000 or 75,000 in a savings bank account. A free surplus should go into an ultra short bond fund. And from the ultra short bond fund, he should be invested to an STP or uh, whatever, mostly an STP. So that ultra short bond fund could have uh, six months, eight months, one year, two years expenses, which will always be there because he's constantly pushing money into that fund. That should be his go to fund when he has a surplus. That should be his go to fund when he needs money. Okay, so logically speaking, PV SIPs wouldn't work, right? Because you're not sure about 
when you have uh, money in your account and STPs therefore and we've spoken about this in the recent past but just in case people are not familiar with it could you take them through mm-hmm. how you would normally do an STP it has to be in the same fund obviously yeah so he would go have a ultra short bond fund to uh, fund also, right he could have uh, in say fund A and fund B he could have two ultra short bond fund uh, comes and from there he could do an STP uh into a large cap fund mid cap fund and a small cap fund and maybe even a retirement plan so he could have three four such uh, stps going suppose he is very confident that he will earn at least 50000 rupees a month he should do an stp for 50000 rupees so he would have accumulated say 5 6 lakhs in a ultra short bond fund so he should do 50000 rupees stp every month he gets at least 50000 so he should actually keep on pushing money into to an stp some months when he gets 2 3 lakhs he will have more money that's about all so his contingency fund will be a little more maybe every quarter or every event you, know, you could um, at uh, diwali christmas holi whenever you look at it and say oh i got 7 lakhs lying here and you get 6 lakhs so let me put 1 lakh into one of those funds that i'm doing an stp you could do a lump sum also you could do a i mean you could put 1 lakh or 50000 away into one of those funds so yeah that he could do a quarterly review but every month he should do an scp of 50000 because he is confident that he will earn at least 50000 so that is what he should be doing the other thing which he should be doing is uh, he should be getting himself a credit card and making sure that all his expenses is uh, uh, electricity telephone gas everything gets debited to the uh, credit card so that you know end of the month he knows okay this month i have to pay 18000 rupees on the credit card or 32000 Fees on the credit card, which is all his utility, all his grocery, everything. Everything he charges to one credit card, and he knows how much he's spending every month. So then he can also estimate, saying, okay, my monthly expenses are thirty two thousand rupees. So I know how much surplus I should have end of three four months, uh, and you know he'll be able to estimate that. So a credit card, uh, ultra short bond fund, and one uh, large cap, big cap, small cap fund, and maybe one retirement plan. These are all the funds that he needs. he could do a duplicate it or he could do a mid cap and a large cap in one uh, fund and he could do a small cap and a retirement fund in the other so two fund houses a two ultra short bond funds and four uh, investment funds this is what he needs so uh, am i right in assuming pv that once you have done this initial exercise you've sat down with your expenses you've made a map and you have that ultra short bond fund in place after that you can more or less operate along the same lines as somebody else because you've showed up that initial amount and then you uh, function based on your risk uh, appetite you can have a 60 40 allocation say towards debt once you have that is that correct yeah whichever funds you have chosen you've chosen a hybrid fund you've chosen a equity fund debt fund whatever you've chosen three four funds you've chosen scp is going on If your income increases, you will have more money lying in your ultra short bond fund. Which every quarter when you are reviewing, uh, you will say, "Oh, this month I want two lakhs extra." Next month you say, "Oh, next quarter you say again you have two lakhs extra." Then you know that your STP amount can also go up from fifty thousand to say seventy five thousand or one lakh, right? Because you realize that you can actually do a higher STP. So that is what you will do. Now, if you are a salaried person and you started with the ten thousand rupee SIP. end of one year you say oh god i got so much money extra lying so maybe my sip amount was too small so let me do 14000 rupees as i think right so that is what you will do similarly this fellow will say okay now let me do the sip higher risk one very important thing for him to do or her to do is to take adequate medical insurance because a one bad medical problem it could even be jaundice for one month can completely cripple a professional because it means you wouldn't have attended a function you would have cancelled some appointment maybe you're a I did the same photographer again and again. But largely, if you've been your uh, whereas a guy in service is never crippled, he will get one month paid leave or unpaid leave, but uh, very good chance that he'll get paid leave. You know, if it's a twenty day for John Dales or something like that. But for a pro- professional, he will not get paid. Nobody will pay him because he didn't come, right? So he needs to have a little more contingency, uh, and he needs to definitely have a reasonable sized uh, medical insurance. Because uh, medical, I mean, when he falls ill, he definitely loses income, and if he also has to pay for his uh, expenses because he didn't have adequate insurance, there will be a double bang. So he should be careful about having adequate medical insurance, understanding medical insurance, what 
what will pay, what will not pay, understanding that perfectly is very important for a person who is not in a regular service. The other thing, PV, that you don't have is that safety net that is provided for a salaried employee because of the mandatory saving towards the provident fund. And some people even have the choice that they make to make that VPF, which is a voluntary increase in the provident fund savings that you do. So is it a very good idea to still go for the options that are available, which would be through the PPF, say, or through the NPS to have that tax efficient saving, at least to the extent that you can? Yeah, of course, of course, there is absolutely no denying. But what happens for a business manager, he tries to use all the tight for his business. So a photographer will go and buy a lens, a taxi driver will buy a second uh, car. You know, people wouldn't like to put away money for uh, provident funds or uh, things like that. So yes, compulsorily, even if you can do a small 1,000 rupees per month, 2,000 rupees per month, some start you should make. It's very difficult to convince a 25-year-old professional that, uh, let's say, he's a drummer or he's a music musician who plays at weddings. You know, very difficult to convince such people that they should put away 1,000 rupees per month for their retirement. Because people take time, you know, it's easy for 50 year olds like uh, 56 year olds to say this is what a 22 year old should do. But I should go back and analyze what was I doing at 22. I was definitely not thinking about retirement. So if you're young, you may not think, but yes, if somebody is willing to hand hold you, push you, board you, and into uh, doing a at least a 1000 rupee, 2000 rupee per month amount straight dedicated to your uh, retirement, that would be great. But this is more in theory, people don't actually. We can talk about it for till the cows come home, but people actually do. But yes, if you can push a guy to do it, that'd be great. Well, uh, hopefully they're listening to this uh, program and they're listening to you and they make that start, uh, PV. But my last question to you relates to people, and I mentioned this as maybe one of the category of people within this overarching group, which is people who've started up maybe. How important, according to you, is it for them to pay themselves a salary? Because a lot of times you feel so passionate about that business that you've started, that fledgling thing that you've started, that you don't necessarily take care of your own finances. Now, look at it this way. Like, so a guy has started a business and he uh, has left a job in, say, a big uh, IT company and where he was earning, say, one and a half lakhs a month. So not a great salary, not a bad salary. So he was earning 18 lakhs, now he's done his own startup. If he goes into the startup and signs up on a salary of 1 crore, uh, no funder is going to like it. He's, he's going to say, boss, you can't come into this business and uh, sign up on a 1 crore salary just because it's your own business. It's just not done. We will not fund it. But no funder will say no to an 18 lakh, 20 lakh, 25 lakh kind of a salary because of the uncertainty. He'll say, okay, you are getting 18 lakhs, you can take 25 lakhs. Believe me, that is absolutely essential because 25 lakhs per uh, annum salary over four years is about a crore of rupees. So he would have accrued that money, right? Even if he had not collected it, he would have accrued, you would have paid tax on it because the salary you pay tax on accrual. You would have done all that. So afterwards, when funding comes, it is easy for you to take away a crore of rupees saying, oh, I have to collect my salary. You know, I, I don't think the crore will be 30 lakh, 40 lakh because of uncollected salary. It's possible that you're not collecting your salaries. That will be easy to justify, but it's just saying, oh, I have not taken any salary, so therefore now I want to take salary, which is very, very difficult and almost impossible. And Alex, when you're on your own, you're the Alex sole proprietor, you don't take any salary, that's okay, because the, there is no great distinction. So legally there is, there's no great distinction between the sole proprietor and the, I mean, the owner and the uh, business, right? It's the same with the entity. But the minute if you get into a partnership or you get into somebody else funding, then you should provide for salaries for the people who have put in the effort. So if you and I were to start a business tomorrow and you were to put in all the efforts, there is absolutely no reason why you should not get a salary. And there is no reason why I should get a salary. We could be owners of the business, joint owners, half half. But the person who is putting in the effort has to be compensated for the effort that he puts in. Of course, he will make money uh, when the business makes money, but his salary, whatever you are currently earning somewhere in employment, that has to be compensated. If you don't do it, it will be impossible for you to collect it later on. So you should take a salary, a justifiable salary. So your large loan salary plus 10%, yes, your large loan salary multiplied by three, no funder will like to see that. Happen.